Good morning students this is your teacher Neelam Elawat and we are continuing our chapter that is reproduction organisms and this is our revision class isn't it dear students although this chapter we have completed in the class but i'm still sending you videos right so you so that you can easily revise so let's continue our revision okay everyone okay let's continue now coming to the gamete transfer now in yesterday class we have spoken about that the pre there are two fertilization events pre fertilization events one is formation of gametes and second is gamete transfer so let's continue with our gamete transfer now gamete transfer in case of female in case of male sperm will be made in case of female egg will be made okay everyone now in most of the cases the male gamete is a, is moving it is a motile one the male gamete is motile and the female gamete it is stationary okay it is stationary and the male gamete it is present in the male female gamete it is present in the female now the female male gamete has to be transferred into the female body and that is why there is a mating in case of sexual reproduction there is a mating between the male and the female and the male you can say sperms they will be delivered into the female body and they will reach the egg and both will fuse to form a zygote okay everyone both will form to fume, form the zygote now in few cases like in case of fungi and algae both the gametes they are motile okay both the gametes are motile and they require a medium through which the gametes can move okay if the male gamete is um, uh, you can say motile then it will require a medium so that it can reach the female right everyone so in case of algae bryophytes and pteridophytes water is the medium so basically the water will transport the male gamete to the female gamete or the female body now since male gamete has to travel okay the male gamete has to travel then the chances that the male gamete chances of loss of male gamete is very very high <coughs> so the number of male gametes is always more and the number of female gametes is very very less right why do why the males produce large number of gametes so that at least few gametes they could reach the egg and they can form the zygote and the new generation can be produced coming to the pollination as you know students male uh, in plants there are different types of flowers male flowers female flowers so male will have male parts female will have female parts and if both these parts they are present the same flower then absolutely there is no need to transfer it because a same flower has both of them so pollination means the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma okay this pollination is very very important in case of in case of in case of dioecious plants where male and female parts they are present in different flowers so we can have different two different types of pollination self pollination and cross pollination self pollination means when male and female both the parts they are present in the same flower so in this case we do not require any medium to transfer the pollen grain in case of poll poll cross pollination male and female parts they are present in different flowers so we need a medium to transfer the male gametes so that they could reach the female parts okay so in that case we require medium so your cross pollination can be of two types one if they are occurring on the same plant from one flower to the another flower suppose you have one flower in second flower so from one flower they are moving pollen grains they are moving into the second flower and second is when both the flowers they are present on different plant okay everyone so we can have a different type of pollination so we we either we have a self pollination cross pollination so in both cases the pollen grains have to be transferred but in case of cross pollination medium is 100% required then do a uh, pollination will occur then there is a formation of pollen tube then pollen tube will supply the male gamete to the female uh, near to the female gamete then both the gametes they will fuse and this process is called fertilization what do we call it 
fertilization or syngamy. Now your fertilization, it could be of two types, internal or external. Okay, so fertilization basically means fusion of male and female gametes so that it can form the diploid zygote. Now in some species like rotifers, honeybees and turkey birds, their new organism is developed without fertilization. Okay, new organism, it develops without fertilization and this process is called parthenogenesis. What do we call it? Parthenogenesis. Then as I said, there are two types of fertilization. One is external, another is internal fertilization. So in case of internal fertilization, the fusion of gametes will occur outside the body. Like as in case of frogs, male and the female gametes, they are released into the water. Okay, and in water, they will fuse with each other. Internal fertilization, it occurs inside the body. Okay, external, it occurs outside the body. While internal, it occurs inside the body, like as in case of human beings. Okay, so male gametes or the sperms, they are delivered in the body of the female during the copulation or mating. And then these two fuse and result in the formation of zygote. Okay. Post fertilization events means what are the steps, what are the uh, processes that will occur after the fertilization. Okay, everyone. So, after fertilization means once the zygote has been formed. So, male and female uh, gametes they are fused and they have formed the zygote. So, whatever things occur in the zygote that will be called as post fertilization events. Now, in case of fungi and algae, they both, they develop a thick wall, okay? They develop a thick wall over the zygote and that thick wall will help the zygote, will prevent the zygote from damage and desiccation, right? And then this zygote will undergo a period of rest before the germination can start. So, in plants, it will go a process of, uh, you can say, a period of rest before germination can start, Next is embryogenesis. This means from the zygote. Now zygote has been formed. So from zygote, embryo will be formed. Okay, everyone. And this process will be called embryogenesis. So during embryogenesis, first of all, you have the zygote. Now zygote will undergo the mitosis. That is your cell division. And it will undergo cell differentiation. Some specialized tissues will be made. Then these tissues, they will be grouped to form the organs and then the individual organism will be formed. Okay, so this is a sequence of events that will result in the formation of an embryo. And this process is called embryogenesis. What do we call it? Embryogenesis. So what is embryogenesis, dear students? The formation of embryo from the zygote. Now these animals... The animals, they can be oviparous or viviparous. Okay, everyone? Animals could be oviparous. So, animals, they can be oviparous and viviparous. Oviparous means they produce eggs. Okay, oviparous means they lay eggs. For example, your reptiles and birds. Viviparous means, for example, you have mammals. They only produce young ones. See, hen, you have observed, hen only produces the eggs. Viviparous means they will always produce the young ones. They give birth to children, isn't it? They give birth to small young ones, okay? So, we can categorize animals into two types, oviparous and viviparous. Then is development of the zygote. As I said, there are two types of uh, animals, one which lay eggs, another which lay, which produce young ones, okay everyone? Right? So, they lay the eggs in a safe environment so that the young ones can hatch after a period of incubation. Okay? When they lay eggs, they keep in mind that the eggs, they are laid in a safe environment and they are covered with hard covering so they can, they can survive. The chances of survival could be increased and after a period of incubation, they will hatch out and will produce young ones. In VV Paris, Proper embryonic care is required. So, and protection is required. And thus, it will, uh, the chances of survival is more in case of viviparous organisms. Okay, chances of survival is more. 
Then zygote in flowering plants. See, in case of plants, once the male gamete and the female gamete, they will fuse, they will form the zygote, right? After the zygote formation, or you can, once the zygote has been formed, in flowers, the sepals, petals, stamens, they will fall off. The zygote will form the embryo. Ovules will form the seeds. Ovary will form the fruit. And there is a thick covering on the fruit. And that thick covering is called the pericarp. Right everyone? That thick covering is called the pericarp. Right? So in case of plants, only zygote is left. Rest other parts, they are shedded off. And uh, you can say fruit, ovary will turn into fruit with a thick covering which is called the pericarp. Right everyone? So with this we finish our chapter number 1. And I hope you are thorough with this revision. Right? You should revise it thoroughly. Right everyone? Okay, so that's all from my side for today. And let's come to your homework. Make notes of this topic. I hope you've already made. So what you will do, you will revise this topic thoroughly. And then you will complete your question answers 11 to 18. Dear students, nothing should be left in chapter number 1. Revise it thoroughly. Okay. Okay, that's all from my side. Bye everyone.